The following program contains graphic material, including offensive language. Viewer discretion is advised. I've registered as an Arizona Independent. I know some people might be a little bit surprised by this, but actually, I think it makes a lot of sense. You know, a growing number of Arizonans and people like me just don't feel like we fit neatly into one party's box or the other. And so, like many across the state and the nation, I've decided to leave that partisan process and really just focus on the work that I think matters to Arizona and to our country, which is solving problems and getting things done. So your voting record is pretty capital D Democratic. I mean, your views are generally that of a moderate centrist Democrat. How does leaving the party change how you do your job? Well, I don't think anything will change about how I do my job. Um, Arizonans sent me to the United States Senate to be an independent voice for our state, and I'll continue doing that. Are you ready? Hey everybody, it's Jeff. Uh, well, there is a lot to get into here for a Saturday here, and uh, I'm going to try and do this as briefly as I can here. Uh, so to start with, uh, with Kristen Cinema having flipped to the Independent Party. Uh, everybody, I guess, is pretty well, uh, it's understood that, you know, she's doing this for personal reasons, okay? There, there really is no other reason why she's doing this, okay? Uh, she doesn't want to be primaried. Uh, she wants to keep her seat. And at the same time, she doesn't want to lose her big donors, okay? She gets a lot of money from the pharmaceutical industry and the banking industry, okay? Uh... And uh, all her money that she gets comes from outside of Arizona. So she's not really for Arizona. Okay, so she's uh, basically uh, uh, turning her back on, on uh, you know, on the state of Arizona. And I still, I, st I think that, you know, uh, Carrie Lake has something to do with that too. I mean, at the same time, I mean, she says she's uh, independent, but I think a lot of people would agree with me that she leans more to the Republican side of things than, uh, uh, you know, the Democrat. And uh, so I just, I think that uh, right now with, uh, with her leaving, everybody's worried that, well, is this going to, is this going to upset the balance uh, in, you know, in the Senate? And the answer is technically no. Okay. Technically no. Uh, it's not going to because she still caucuses with the Democrat party, just like Bernie Sanders does. Okay, but that doesn't mean she can't caucus with the other side if she chooses to do so. And so I feel, I feel like, you know, if that's what's going to happen, then I don't think Democrats really should just be certain that this is going to go their way no matter what she does. Okay, I don't think that's the case at all. I think that it's just, uh, you know, Kirsten uh, doing her own thing uh, as always, and it's just more more of the same from her and why would anyone expect anything else from a pig than a grunt okay uh, let's see what the other item here uh, on uh, let's see this is from raw story uh, by Tom Bogiani published today entitled anti LGBTQ leader put on the spot by CNN host for flipping out over being booed from a Virginia restaurant. 
On Saturday morning, CNN host uh, Michael Smirkonish put the head of a right-wing group hostile to the rights of the LGBTQ community on the spot as she whined that she and her colleagues were refused surface at a Virginia restaurant over their views, while at the same time defending uh, the rights of Christian business people refusing to work with same-sex couples. Uh, on December the 2nd, Virginia business reported uh, that the Metzger Bar and Butchery in Richmond's Union Hill neighborhood canceled reservations made by members of the Family Foundation of Virginia because employees and the owner didn't feel comfortable serving the group that it's opposed to equal rights for all. That led the president of the group, Victorian Cross, to this uh, Smirkana show, where the host attempted multiple times to get her to admit that denial of service to her group, group was no different than a Christian baker refusing to make a cake for a same-sex couple, while uh, what she felt was and is justified. Quote, I know you follow the arguments as I did this past Monday in the Supreme Court on the same issue, unquote, Smirconish prompted her. Quote, it's incredible the timing of all this. Justice Sotomayor said, hey, if we allow the web designer to not have to design that web for the same-sex couple for the first time in our history, we're going to be saying it's okay to discriminate based on gender identity, based on race and religion. Uh, <clears throat> You know it's a slippery slope argument. He continued, quote, Would you similarly say a web designer doesn't have to make a cake uh, for an interracial marriage because they don't agree with that from their religious point of view? Unquote. Quote, I think we are stretching the Laurie Smith case to, the, to be something that it is not. Unquote. Cobb replied, quote, She has a fundamental concern about same-sex marriage. It's not the people... It's I don't want to write a speech. I have to literally write content and create beautiful imagery on something that violates my faith. That's her case, unquote. Well, we haven't seen a ruling yet. It sounds favorable from what folks are saying, unquote. She continued, quote, it is because we protect speech. It is a bedrock principle. It is so important that no one, not even a uh, paying customer, compels someone else to have to say or write words they don't agree with. I think that's the America we want to live in, unquote. Quote, I want to live in a world where everybody gets served, unquote. The CNN host shot back, quote, I, don't, I want to live some, uh, I, I'd like to live in some world where judgments aren't made based on religious conviction. You respectfully didn't answer me. I think the web designer would could say, oh my God, it's an interracial marriage. I'm not designing a website. The baker could say, I'm not going to bake a cake for them. I want everybody to get served. Uh... Tom Bogiani, I think you need to work on your writing here because I saw a shitload of mistakes here in your report here as I was reading this. <laughs> okay, uh, your editor or whoever edits your stuff needs to get their head examined. Okay, listen, <clears throat> we're still bitching about what happened here with, uh, with Lori here with this fake fucking case that was brought to the Supreme Court this week. Okay, and... <clears throat> The, the thing is, is that we're, st you know, we're still at that point where we're talking about discrimination and now we're trying to talk about when is, when is it okay to discriminate, <laughs> okay? Uh, because these people think that it's their First Amendment right that it's, it's, it covers discrimination, okay? And people are saying, no, if you're a, a fucking business and you, and you advertise as a public business, okay, then... You can't also put underneath and quote uh, in brackets, okay, that oh we don't serve X, Y, and Z, okay, in there. That's not that's not right. That's you're you're actually crossing the line when you do something like that, and you open yourself up for libel. Uh, so no business would have the balls to put something like that there unless they're looking to get closed or get uh, uh, vandalized by people who don't agree with them. Okay, that's that's the way it's that's the way it is. But it seems like people today in the right wing feel really emboldened to take it to the nth degree, to take it to that point where they want to say, we can discriminate, it's covered under the First Amendment. And they can't point to any specifics in that amendment that even suggests that they could do that. Okay? It's just not acceptable. But in this, in this point in time in our country, we have people in the Supreme Court 
in a lot of courts and in the in the government you know the legislative branch you know okay where they could tweak things in order for something like that to happen and that's dangerous okay and that's the reason why the Democrats are fighting so hard right now to try and uh, keep them away from you know the switches and controls to undo everything this country was founded on which they succeeded in doing as far as uh, abortion is concerned okay that's still a matter that hasn't been resolved yet okay even though the vote the midterms you know spoke but the midterms didn't speak and as far as I'm concerned loud enough okay the, the, uh, the results are too close we ended up pretty much in the same situation as before uh, and I think that uh, right now that you know the we have to focus our attention on you know the Supreme Court itself because that's really where the reign of power goes as far as the Republican Party is concerned that's where they've been taking their complaints and their and their will to instead of the you know the, the Senate and the Congress okay so there's a story here from routers uh, and uh, I want to read this here to you it's about the Supreme Court and <clears throat> this is written by Graham uh, Slatery and Nate Raymond entitled uh, pastor to Congress 2014 Supreme Court leak pushed limits of Christian ethics uh, a pastor told a US congressional panel on Thursday he believed he pushed the boundaries of Christian ethics when he learned in advance of a landmark 2014 Supreme Court decision that exempted some companies from ins insuring employees for birth control. Reverend uh, Rob Sh uh, Schenk, Schenk, I guess that's how you say it, previously told the New York Times that he was informed of the Burwell versus Hobby Lobby ruling weeks before its public announcement after two conservatives allies of his dined at uh, the home of Justice Samuel Alito and his wife. Alito has denied any part in it. Uh, Shank, who has since disavowed many of his socially conservative stances, spoke on Thursday at a House Judiciary Committee hearing uh, titled, quote, Undue Influence, Operation Higher Court and Politicking at SCOTUS, unquote. The 2014 decision was a victory for religious conservatives, as it exempted family-owned businesses that objected on religious grounds from a federal requirement that any health insurance they provide to employees must also cover birth control for women. Decisions by the High Court are typically shrouded in secrecy until the justices issue their opinions, which range from technical decisions on fine aspects of the law to sweeping rulings that change life for millions of Americans. Prominent Democrats have called for increased oversight at the Supreme Court, which now has a 6-3 conservative majority that includes three appointees of Republican former President Donald Trump. Unlike lower-level federal courts, justices are not bound by a formal code of ethics, which Democratic lawmakers say makes them susceptible to influence peddling and conflicts of interest. Quote, I believe we push the boundaries of Christian ethics and compromise the High Court's promise to administer equal justice, unquote, Schenck said in his opening statement. Quote, but I'm also co uh, conscious we were never admonished for the type of work our missionaries did, unquote. Republicans have called into question Schenck's account, dismissing it as unfounded hearsay and criticized Democrats for failing to express the same level of alarm after a leak earlier this year of a decision overturning a woman's right to abortion. In that case, a majority opinion written by Alito in overturning the landmark 1973 Roe v. Wade decision that had legalized abortion nationwide was leaked to Politico. U.S. Chief Justice John Roberts directed the Supreme Court's uh, marshal to investigate the leak, calling it a betrayal. Justice Alito, an intellectual hero for some conservatives, would later say the leak this year put him and his colleagues at risk of assassination. In interviews with the Times, Schenck described a campaign to gain access to justices through elaborate networking schemes and donations to third-party institutions. Schenck on Thursday said he was motivated to come forward out of fear that the Supreme Court staff would unfairly take the blame for the Dobbs leak. So, 
there was a lot more uh, to this what happened here than what this article even covers here. Uh, it, they were describing how some of these bri uh, bribes were taking place here uh, with the justices uh, prior to the Roe versus Wade decision. Uh, and they were getting money, you wouldn't believe how much. I mean, favors and stuff like that. Uh, these justices were being lobbied uh, by religious groups. Uh, you know, the money was just pouring in, okay? And I'm, I mean, I'm, it probably doesn't come to much shock to anybody out there listening to this, okay, that that happened, okay? This is something that's gone on in the Supreme Court for years. But it's like, it doesn't come out public uh, enough, as far as I'm concerned, because this this is really, it was an important hearing uh, for the public to, to witness here, because uh, it spoke in detail about how some of these, these things, uh, how the swamp that we have in, in our government was working against the people, and how the justices were happy to take the money, the bribes, and all that shit, uh, so that way they could, you know, uh, if you have no no problem with you know attacking women's right here so I just I feel like this is uh, when everything was going on last week uh, this was some kind of this was a story that kind of slipped under the mainstream radar and just kind of disappeared okay and uh, because you know everybody was talk we're focusing on the Supreme Court's ruling on the voting ethics uh, uh, issue issue there. That's what the big talk was for the whole week was that. But this was happening at the same time, and this one didn't really get reported enough. And because you you know the the problem with the voting issue really is rooted here with with the justices getting money and bribes, okay, to rule in an outsider's favor. All right. And it goes to show you the corrupt, the corrupted nature of the court as it stands right now. And we don't, and like, like the article said, there are no ethics laws for these people that to have to follow. Only the other judges in this country have laws that they have to follow. Okay, but the Supreme Court justices, they don't have to abide by any fucking law. They don't. They're not even held accountable for what they do. Uh, so it's perfectly fine for them to take bribes and stuff like that. That has to stop. Okay, that has to stop because if you cannot control the outside influence and what goes on at the court, then how the hell can we ever trust the court to do the right thing, to do what, what the majority of the country wants? Because that's the only thing that, that matters, really. And if they can't, and if they're unable to follow the Constitution as it's laid out, okay, then there is no point to the Supreme Court. I mean, isn't that the reason why they're there, is to make sure that the, the Constitution is interpreted? correctly you know isn't that what it's for so if they don't want to interpret the Constitution correctly instead they just want to advance their own personal agenda and the agenda of outsiders okay in you know then hey you don't have a Supreme Court okay you really don't well, I don't know what the, it's like another arm of uh, uh, of uh, leadership in our government that already has leadership they want to play the role of president as well Okay, and and I just I feel like this was really important because with the situation that that uh, this laid out for the Supreme Court, then we can't possibly expect them to rule uh, justly on the voting issue that's you know been argued with them uh, all week. They're not going to care, so we know they're getting money from the Republican Party and, and groups associated with the Republican Party to rule against the voters in this country. I mean, it makes perfect sense to me. So until we can cut off that fucking uh, uh, that dark money that comes into in both the White House, the Senate, the Congress, and now the judiciary, if unless we can shut that off, folks, we'll never really have an honest government here ever. It won't even matter who the fuck we vote in, into any office because we'll always be scratching our head wondering. Are these people going to stand with us, or are they going to take the handout given to them so they can rule for somebody, some minority out there? You know, the majority will never get their way. The minority will always get its way. You know, and usually that's going to be in the form of big business, you know, trying to uh, muscle their way into something, into being something that doesn't benefit any of us as a whole. All right? 
and <clears throat> we all we, we all know just how intertwined the conservative party is with uh, with the big business world out there okay their focus their energy their concern is all about them while they get well they uh, wrestle with their own base to get the votes they need to keep themselves in power so they can continue to serve the big businesses of the world okay that's what they're that's what they're all about so they have no loyalty to the voters what they throw them is a a societal upheaval to shift their focus away from uh, a real poignant issue here in in our in our country uh, so that way they they go to the polls voting for something else other than what's more important you know they, they create crises that don't exist you know like s critical race theory you know things like that they they get the voters at each other's throats in the meantime that's when they do their bait and switch problems and they uh, uh, we end up voting people in that are doing something that had absolutely nothing to do with what they ran for okay nothing to do uh, so uh, you can you can watch this interview here that happened uh, on YouTube they have it there uh, this is the pastor who was uh, at the hearing for Congress and I think you know it's it's long <laughs> okay so I'll, what I'll do is I'll put in some links here to uh, the videos uh, of the hearings and stuff like that and uh, you can watch them I hope you do watch them because it really does explain much better than this article I read here does about the details of what and how these things went down um, that gave us the the uh, controversial ruling on Roe versus Wade um, uh, it's something to hear okay um, so anyway, uh, let's go to a commercial break. We'll be right back. This is me. This is me. This is me! This is me. I'm Alex Curtis. I'm a lobsterman in Maine, and this is me. I'm Ruth McLaughlin, and this is me. I'm Eric Hopkins. I'm an artist, and this is me. This. This. This is me. 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 This is me. This is me. This is me. At the end of the journey, the main thing is you, original. Blueberry? Mm. Watermelon? Mm. Ah. Huh? New triple treat from Bubble Tape. 
Six feet of gum, six feet of fun. New sour crystals. Better tasting bubble tape sours. Six feet of gum, six feet. Glenn? That's right. I'm on a hippo eating airheads. I'd like a hippo. Airheads have more fun. Charlottetown coming to Halifax November 6th to the 18th and St. John November 20th through the 26th. Okay, everybody, welcome back. Okay, so here, here's another article here from Mediate. Uh, it's written by Kit Jones, uh, entitled, Jesse Waters wonders if Brittany Griner is proud of being responsible for freeing the merchant of death, okay? Uh, and of course, you know, Jesse Waters, this is somebody from Fox News here. But I want to read this anyway because this is uh... all right. <clears throat> anyway, uh, starts. Fox News host Jesse Waters wondered if uh, wondered Friday if WNBA star Brittany Griner holds her head high after her release from a Russian penal colony resulted in the release of an infamous arms dealer. Uh, Griner was freed from captivity ten months after she was arrested in Russia for possessing cannabis. The Biden administration agreed to trade her for Victor Bout, a.k.a., quote, the merchant of death, unquote. Bout spent 11 years in an American prison after he was convicted in 2011, following decades of smuggling weapons to war-ravaged parts of the world. Amid a discussion on the Five about whether the trade was fair, 
Waters noted uh, Griner arrived in the U.S. early Friday morning. He wondered whether she is struggling with Bouts' release, which he said she is ultimately responsible for. Quote, Ukraine has to be thinking, wait a second, Joe, seriously, you're going to let the merchant of death out while we're at war with those guys? Unquote, he said. I'm wondering how Griner is feeling walking around the United States right now, unquote, he added. Quote, is her head held high or is her head held low, knowing that her and her agent are responsible for springing the merchant of death out there in the world? Uh, unquote. Waters also criticized Biden for saying he was under pressure from black women to get a deal done to free Griner. He accused the president of not having his priorities straight about other issues. A tremendous amount of pressure from black women, and he acts like this. He's not under any pressure over the border. He's not under any pressure for inflation. He's not under any pressure for anything else in this ridiculous administration. He's under pressure uh, from black women, and he springs this celebrity out like that. Waters concluded he was glad to see Griner free, but said Biden should have asked for more. Quote, if you have sanctions on this country, weapons pouring in, killing Russians, and we have all this oil under the ground here, there's not something we could have done better to get a better deal? Unquote, he asked. So, okay, here's the thing. Uh, it's impossible to please Republicans no matter what you do, okay? Uh, first, they were criticizing Biden for not doing anything to get out uh, Brittany Griner. Uh, and then when he does, they bitch about the way he did it. Sort of like what happened with the Ang Afghanistan thing. You know, uh, he, the, he pulled, the country wanted us out, out of there, uh, <clears throat> because we had been in Afghanistan, Afghanistan for 20 friggin' years, fighting for what reason? Okay, it's terrorism or whatever, okay? <clears throat> but we weren't getting anywhere. And so, when he gets, when, uh, when Trump made a deal to pull us out of Afghanistan, Okay, and he then he lost the election. It was up to Biden to honor that that deal. So he got us out of Afghanistan, and when he did it, the the Republicans criticized Biden for that because we lost you know what thirteen people or something like that uh, in the in the uh, evacuation. Okay, but they never bitched at all about the twenty friggin' years that we that the Republican Party had kept us in Afghanistan. You know, uh, for the most part. Uh, fighting this, uh, this uh, never-ending war in, a, in that country. But, no, they're going to come after Biden for losing, you know, a handful of people uh, in the extraction here of getting everybody out, okay? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's really hard to figure the Republicans out, you know, and, and it has to be unnerving to be a Republican to constantly having to stay on your feet knowing where you're supposed to stand at any, any given moment because you don't know. <laughs> you know, you might be going around telling people things you're for and the, the uh, narrative that the Republican Party may have changed and said now you're supposed to be against it and now you sound like a Democrat because you're for it. <laughs> you know? Uh, I can't be a part of a, a party like that. Okay? It either has a principle to stand by or it doesn't. All right, and right now the GOP doesn't have a principle to stand by. It shifts from from you know all the time, depending on which way the political wind is blowing, and what favors them uh, in the polls. You know, uh, if they're going to be against nuclear weapons and it gives them more approval, then they'll do that. If it doesn't, then they'll say they're for it. You know, that's that's the kind of party that they are. They're they're wishy washy. They got no fucking. Uh, criteria they got no standard they have nothing okay they're in it for themselves that's the very definition of how you can tell when a political party is self-serving okay when it just constantly shifts its you know opinions on things depending on what suits them better at the, any given time so it doesn't really matter it's like listening to polls polls don't really matter okay because those things are often uh doctored in order to make it make uh, a certain thing look a certain way Okay, and the polls could be completely wrong, and they have been many times uh, in our country here. So re Republicans are like that. Whatever they say, take it with a grain of salt because they don't mean it for one thing, and they're probably just pulling your pulling the leg out from under you uh, to try to get you to believe what they're saying is true. All right, never believe a damn thing they tell you. Um, 
but uh, <coughs> this thing here with the uh, with Griner, uh, you know, people were were t they were saying, you know, look, she was being held there for, without reason. The guy that we had, okay, uh, that they let loose there, the the, the uh, arms dealer, okay, we had a reason to hold him. All right. We had a reason to hold him because he was responsible for a lot of a lot of fucking deaths and stuff like that, uh, and and so the Russians are going to offer us somebody who isn't a terrorist, who isn't an arms dealer, and we're going to give Russia back, you know, a person of that caliber. I do agree that. We should have held Russia over the fire a little bit more than than what you know than just getting this this woman back, because we weren't giving giving them back a pot tart, you know we were giving them you know a big fucking plate uh, steak dinner here, and we got back you know a, a sports character who did nothing wrong. Okay, she's not wanted by in the world for anything that she did. Okay. Uh, she she has no crime except for this, you know the stupid uh, pot thing that they got her on, which is Christ half the damn world does it. Okay, so she basically an innocent person, and they traded her uh, for this guy. I mean, it's like you know, it's like let's hand over Hitler for Christ's sake, you know, for a person that's being held. I mean, it's like come on, Biden. You know, you gotta you got somebody here that they want and they want bad. Okay, you know that, and. And instead of saying, well, I want Griner back plus, okay, not just her, I want her and this. I want you to stop fucking, fucking around in Ukraine, stop lodging rockets over there. You know, basically that's what I would have done. Because it was a, an opportunity here to try and work some kind of a deal out, uh, you know, f to get maybe some, uh, you know, respite here for Ukraine. And he let it go. He, I mean, he let it go. I don't agree, you know, you know, with Biden on that. I don't think that that should have been such an easy swap. It makes it look like that the Russians have all the cards here, and we had no choice but to give them, you know, one of the worst, you know, people we we could have handed back to them. Okay. Uh, and you know, when it comes to you know families, you know, screaming and, and hollering at Biden to release someone, you know, in their family, of course it's going to be emotional. Of course they're going to go to the press and make a, an emotional cry, an appeal to the people to you know to get her out. But at the same time, emotion clouds your judgment. It clouds your logic, you know, uh, and you can't really ask these people to say, well, look, why can't you you know work with Biden or something or or understand that we have a bigger problem going on in the world right now where Ukraine is being attacked. These people don't want to hear anything about that. They just want their daughter, their son, whoever it is that's in their family to come back, okay? Because they've been over there and, and stuff. And like I said, Biden could have really could have really asked for, for more, okay? I think this was a, a negotiation that uh, to get her back that really was... Let me just say like the Russians, they got away uh, <laughs> with murder here, basically. Okay, they got quite a bargain. Um, and they got a lot more Americans over there, the holding too, by the way, still. So they can get more bargains from us if Biden chooses to just keep handing things over to them like the way he did here. Okay, um, so this is one of the things that I, that I don't like had happen. Okay, because like I said, there's a lot more people on the line than just... Uh, uh, Brittany Griner, uh, Griner here, okay? You've got thousands and thousands that have already died because of Russian invasion here in Ukraine. And, the, you know, Americans want us to just focus on this one person here and what's happened to her, where everybody uh, in Ukraine has been, you know, the families have been torn apart and lives have been lost. Uh, and, the, and the president here was given this opportunity here that he could have done something more than just get this girl back. He could have done something more, okay, if the Russians really wanted this guy back, the merchant of death. If they really wanted him back that bad, <clears throat> they might have capitulated to a, a few other conditions, okay? Who knows? 
But then at the other, on the other hand, how would you ever trust them to honor their agreement? Because they don't, they're no longer part of the rest of the world, as it were. I mean, Russia might as well be another planet now, as far as uh, Earth is, uh, the, the uh, NATO community is concerned. They pretty much cut all business ties off with Russia, and, and Russia has pretty much closed their borders off to other people. So, you know, there's always that, that, I mean, we could have handed this guy over and we never would have got Brittany. I mean, that's just, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just that kind of thing going on right now. And, uh, but like I said, there's, you know, this couldn't have happened at a worse time. Her being arrested over there 10 months ago and stuff like that. That's why I, I've said long time ago, Americans stay the fuck out of these countries. Okay. Stay the hell out of them. Okay, because Americans are not loved around the world like you think they are. Okay, you might hear that from one country, you might hear that from certain people that you talk to, but by and large, America is viewed very, very negatively. And I've seen it myself when I've been in the military. Okay, Americans are not loved uh, all around the world, especially in countries that, uh, you know, uh, do business with us uh, and countries that we have shaky ties with you know like the middle east and stuff like that those people have really no interest in seeing americans stepping on their soil over there and yet we got americans that fly all around the world they want to go see this they want to go see that and then whoops one of them gets uh, captured and then then they put the whole country you know they're a hostage now and they got the american government all focused on on the, trying to get them out <laughs> you know and I say, well, look, you people watch the news. You must know what's going on in the world. You don't book a fucking flight to a country that we are having ten uh, some tensions with just because you want to go sightseeing, <laughs> okay? The minute they find out you're an American, guess what? There's an automatic bullseye put right on your forehead wherever you go. You might as well be walking around with a bulletproof vest on or a, a security squad. Because to them, any American is free game. It doesn't matter who you are, or what you are. They know that they can they can force the government to do something for them if they have one of us. Okay, uh, and that's why you got to stay out of out of countries that we're having trouble with. Like, don't go to China right now. Stay the hell out of China. Don't go to North Korea. Okay, don't go to the Middle East. Don't definitely don't go to Russia right now. And stay the hell out of Ukraine unless you want to get shot. Okay, because they're at war over there. So, you know, there's areas of the world. Pay attention, people. Pay the hell attention to things. Yeah, I understand, you know, Griner was doing sports in Russia because she was getting paid more money to do basketball over there. But when she's found out that there was uh, tensions building up and that she should have just packed her bags and got the hell out of Dodge. I mean, that, that's what I would have done. I, I'm not going to get caught up in that shit. You know, <laughs> you know, so I just feel like, you know, you know, she has to take a little bit of the blame here for having spent 10 months in prison. Okay. I'm not saying all the blame, but I'm saying maybe 10% of the blame because after all, she shouldn't have been there when things were getting hot, uh, uh, between, uh, Russia and Ukraine and then the United States. Okay. She should have saw the handwriting on the wall. I would have, but, uh, anyway, she just, uh, she should have left. But because she didn't, now we get her back, but we lost a very nasty asshole who really shouldn't be out back in the world because this guy is going to go right back to what he was doing before, and the Russians are going to uh, support him there, whatever he wants to do, and more people, probably more Americans, are going to end up dead. Okay? So... Uh, this coming out of Fox, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously, they're taking the issue, they're making this issue because they want to say something negative about Joe Biden. I'm taking the issue because I'm saying I'm disappointed with the president for allowing this guy to go so easily, okay? If the Russians really wanted him back, they would have probably capitulated to a couple more things other than just giving back uh, Brittany Griner, okay? They, they made her look like she was way more important than a guy who's probably responsible for how many American deaths, uh, you know, in the past. So I just feel like that's, that was really not the right thing to do. Okay, and to go back here to Kristen Cinema here, <clears throat> uh, some reactions to uh, what she 
uh, announced <laughs> uh, yesterday, I think. Um, there's this article here from Business Insider, uh, written by uh, Kenneth Nemey, entitled, Arizona Democratic Party official says voters feel that Kristen Sinema has totally turned her back on the people who got her into office. Well, they're right, I think. <laughs> Uh, an Arizona Democratic Party official said that voters in the state feel like Senator Kristen Sinema has turned her back on the people who voted for her after she announced that she would no longer serve as a member of the Democrat Party. Michael Slugaki, the vice chair of the Arizona Democratic Party, said Sinema, quote, has no constitutiony, uh, constitutiony group, constituency, I'm sorry, <laughs> has no constituency group in Arizona. Uh, anymore after her announcement on NBC's Meet the Press Friday. Quote, they feel like she's totally turned her back on the people that got her into office, unquote, Slugaki said on Meet the Press. Quote, she might have some support from independents, but she has no base. She has no coalition. She only has this personal interest in retaining her personal power in her Senate seat, unquote. Uh, Cinema announced Friday that she would be leaving that at the Democrat Party and registering as an independent. Cinema wrote that becoming an independent, quote, won't change my work in the Senate. My service to Arizona remains the same, unquote. In a series of tweets, Cinema said that she was, quote, joining the growing number of Arizonans who reject par uh, party politics, unquote. Sugaki acknowledged on, quote, Meet the Press that independents make up, quote, one third, unquote, of the electorate in Arizona. But he said cinema is still very popular, uh, uh, very unpopular, rather, among independents. Quote, she does not have a good favorability rating among anybody, unquote, Sugaki said. One AARP poll conducted in September showed cinema has a favorability rating of 37% among Arizona Democrats, 36% among Arizona Republicans, and 41% uh, among independents. So you suppose maybe she was going by this AARP poll to figure, well, I can jump out of the Democrat Party and go into the independent one and maybe kind of uh, suck in some of those extra <coughs> favorability points. Um, uh, I heard it said that Arizona is a state that is red and aiming to be red. Uh, and doesn't really go with the outside parties like the Green Party, the Independent, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I heard it said about that. But this poll here shows that uh, Republican, I mean, the Independents are getting more favorability than the other two parties in Arizona. So that might mean that maybe Arizona is kind of getting, you know, sick of the back and forth between the two parties. I don't know. Uh, like I said, a poll is like, you know, take it with salt. Okay. But this, you know, that's what I'm reading out of this. That maybe that the Arizona state of Arizona isn't so much leaning one way or the other anymore. It looks like it's split somewhere, even uh, between the two. Um, but, you know, like I said, this, this is a move that has really very little to do with politics here as far as Kristen Smith uh, as cinema is, is concerned. She's doing this for herself, okay, because it means more money. She doesn't want to lose that gravy train by putting herself in the, in the uh, sight of a primary that's coming up, okay? She doesn't want to be, she don't want to lose to another Democrat. And she knows she's not ranking too good with Democrats right now, so there's the possibility she could lose uh, in that party if she stays in it, okay? So she jumps ship and she goes independent. Now, let's take the AARP poll here, you know, and just say that that's accurate. If the Republican side was higher than the, in the independent, I think she would probably have joined the Republican Party instead uh, because, you know, figuring that, you know, hey, they're, they got more favorability, and I got a better chance at holding my position in there, okay? Uh, but the way I see it, okay, is that it really hinges a lot on what kind of a job she does, no matter what party she's with. 
uh, if she's an independent and she does a piss poor job like she's been doing all this time as a Democrat, she still could lose her seat. <laughs> you know, I, I just feel like there's there's really no way for her to protect her gravy train here unless she does her fucking job and does it, you know, with a you know with a point of being honorable and consistent with with her principles. And right now we don't see that she has any. So what can we expect from her? You know. What you know? We're not there. She's not going to all of a sudden wake up after you know a Christmas carol <laughs> and had visited by the three spirits. Okay, it's not going to be like that with her. It never happens like that. These people never have these come to Jesus moments. Uh, they're corrupted. Uh, they're they're sucking down the the uh, the the uh, gravy train. They're right, right in the fucking swamp. Okay, <laughs> and uh, they're just never going to they're never going to let that go. She's She's that kind of person, uh, you know, and, and, you know, I, I, whenever I talk about, you know, some of these, these, uh, women here, like Marjorie Taylor Greene and all these other ones here that, that, that are, that are causing so much headache and how years, you know, have gone by where I've heard people say, get a woman in there and, and it'll be a whole lot better, you know, and I think all these women that are politicians now are proving the point that it isn't males Okay, it's not females. It's greed that corrupts the system. It's the greed. If you don't take the money out of politics, then you're never going to have the kind of people you want when you vote. You're never going to get the honest-to-goodness people like, like a Bernie Sanders or somebody like that who's actually there for you, who actually is arguing for you, who realizes that this is not just about me. It's all about it's all about those who voted me here. They have the majority. I'm just the I'm just the mouth. Okay, I'm put there to argue to speak for them because they can't all be here talking at the same time. I have to talk for them. That's their I'm their their <clears throat> go between. Okay, it's like a, a guy that's got to deliver uh, food for a grocery store. Okay, he's doing it on behalf of the grocery store so you get your food. Okay, that's all he's there for. That's what Bernie Sanders. That's what every politician is there. They're just there to carry the groceries, okay, to the uh, to the uh, for the store, okay. But these people get in there, and now all of a sudden, you know, who who voted for me? I don't remember. They're there for themselves. They have their own agenda, okay, and that has to stop. It doesn't matter if it's a woman or a man. You know, they're all. They're all corrupted by the same damn thing. The green greenbacks, okay? The friggin' money. All right? So, that argument, I guess, now that we've had it and we've seen what uh, what happens with women now in politics, uh, <laughs> uh, they can be as miserable and as corrupt as any friggin' man that goes into politics, okay? Um, money talks... Uh, through all barriers, okay? They affect everybody the same way. So, like I said, we have to, as voters, be we have to take the the action of voting much more serious than we have been over the past, okay? We really do, okay? And until we do, until we start looking at real people, start looking at real candidates, and stop picking those people whom we know you know, are like, mm, you know, they could be corrupt. They, you know, like already, we, I mean, who didn't think Trump was already corrupt when he was running for president? Who didn't think that? <laughs> okay, everybody knew this guy was a joke. Okay, that's why he was getting so much press attention because even the press thought it was funny to have this guy run for president. So we all knew what the kind of idiot he was, but the people went ahead and voted for him. And I'm thinking, you guys are out of your friggin' mind. I mean, if Cookie Monster ran for president, you people would probably out there vote for that son of a bitch. I mean, because you'd think, oh, I am against abortion, so let's have Cookie Monster sit in the damn way out. That's the kind of mentality I'm talking about that we got from the Republican Party uh, prior to, to Trump being voted in office, okay? These people don't think seriously. Their minds are clouded by all kinds of nonsense, and they don't know which end is up. So we have to stop catering to people like that. The Republicans need to stop catering to the nuts, okay? They need to stop that, so that way they don't keep putting in ridiculous loons in, in government. And you could see how, you know, even though there's just 
a few he headaches right now. Those few headaches really are causing a bigger headache at the end of the day, aren't they? Okay, because these people are wrecking the system from the inside. And once they get their hands on any power at all, they, they use the, the whole breadth of their power to take whatever action they can legally take, and maybe a little bit not so legal, to unbalance the boat, basically, in their favor. And Trump's, Trump uh, really, really unbalanced this boat pretty bad, okay? And so much so that what he's done, the fallout, is still there. And the, uh, the people that, uh, that he got in power are, are there still, you know, ruining the whole system, the whole shebang. Okay, so we're going to be forever getting rid of this and, and then fixing everything that they did wrong. Okay, that's why if you people want America to be strong again, we have to start taking more responsibility to making logical choices about who should be uh, president, who should be senator, who should be congressman, governor, you know, all the way down the list. Okay, uh, you know, buy a bullshit filter and put and wear it for Christ's sake. <laughs> you know, uh, some of us have a better idea of what uh, you know what kind of bullshit to expect from certain people but we all need to really update our bullshit filters here and understand when we're being taken for a ride as voters and we really got taken for a ride uh, you know with Donald Trump here and and still with the people he's got sitting in power still okay <clears throat> and the ride's not over yet people I mean <laughs> I hate to say it but we're still riding this friggin roller coaster here and, uh, you know, if you want off of this thing, there's only one way to do it, and that's to vote people out. And, you know, and get good people in there who really care about doing the job you want them to do. Okay? And people, you want to go in, you want to make money for yourself, stop going into politics to do it, okay? Uh, it might be a get-rich-quick scheme for you, but at the end of the day, you're, you're winning at the expense of how many millions you're betraying. Okay, and if you can if you can sleep at night with that, then there's something wrong with you. You shouldn't be trusted to be anywhere near the White House or anywhere near DC for that matter. Okay, you need to stay the hell out of politics. If you'll if you'll sell your soul for a, a quick fix of money <coughs> and sell out how many people supported you, uh, you're you're worse than shit in my book, okay? You're worse than shit. All right, so that's it for today, everybody, and I hope you have a great rest of the weekend. Um, I will put the links to some of these things I talked about. I hope you'll watch them, okay, because they, they are kind of uh, revealing here in things. And uh, please keep your ears open for uh, about COVID-19. And uh, you know, be safe out there with, uh, you know, protecting yourself from it. And uh, treat each other well. We're st still in the holiday season here, and uh, uh, it's good to try to be nice to people and stay away from those who aren't nice because they'll just make you miserable. So, <laughs> um, so take care, everybody. I'll talk to you later.